All right. Well, hey, welcome, everybody, and thanks uh, to the previous two speakers. I know I listened to part of uh, Andre's stuff, and it's great stuff. And I think the theme you'll hear from most uh, of us that uh, give these kind of presentations and that we've been around a little while is that uh, while our method to get where we're going may be a little different, the common themes of money management and lot sizing and, and risk control and you know how you how you prepare yourself to trade each day will not alter all of that much. So it's always good to hear someone else do some of the stuff that uh, that I like to do and some of the stuff that I preach in our trading room all the time. I'm going to talk about uh, market profile and price action and uh, a little bit of Delta on the ES today. And, uh, you know, feel free, uh, obviously, to, to shoot your questions in. I'm always happy to uh, try to answer them as we go. Um, but if not, uh, just so you guys know, we will have at the very end of this presentation a link to where you can go to another go to webinar and you guys can come to my trading room and I'll, I'll spend an extra hour or so answering questions. So kind of keep that in mind that uh, if I can't get to, to you through the presentation, um, I'll be happy to uh, to work with you after um, and, and we'll give you another link and I'm sure Dan will be able to put that link in there. Just don't uh, hang up on this one until we get to get the next one. It'll only let you do two go, or one go to webinar at a time. So what, uh, what I want to talk about, again, uh, just like all the other ones, we have to give the uh, the risk profile here. Um, what we talk about today is for educational purposes only. There is no way in one hour anybody can teach you how to trade. Um, I subscribe to the 10,000 hour rule myself that I think you have to really put in your time like if you were getting an advanced degree. Um, and that still may not be enough for some folks, right? Some people are cut out to do this, some aren't. Um, but what we try to teach you is how to minimize the impact on your account while you're getting the, uh, the the beginnings and the bare bones of learning how to trade. But again, you can lose all of your money trading futures. You can lose all of your money trading currencies and and, uh, and certainly uh, trading stocks if you're uh, if you're trading pretty naked. So just kind of keep in mind that what we talk about here is idea based, educational based, and that we want to be able to give you a you know a kind of a clear picture of what we do in our business. And then again, I'll answer all of your questions. Um, either at the end of this presentation or throughout it if, if we're starting to run okay on time. And then afterwards, we'll have a little after hours party in my trading room and, and you guys can ask whatever you like. I'm pretty much an open book when it comes to that. One of my favorite sayings, guys, uh, and you guys have seen, I'm sure, trade what you see, not what you think. And I just added hope or pray for, because there, there's nothing worse than getting upside down in a trade and uh, having to hope and pray, right? So a little bit of what Andre was talking about. Oh, there's a green candle, you know, oh, oh. Uh, maybe it'll come back for me. And, and most times, you know, it doesn't until you get to that point where you finally give up on it and you've you know, taken 10 or 15% out of your account. And, and we don't want you to have to hope or pray, right? You know, like, like Andre said, your, your brain is not wired um, to think correctly once you're in a trade until you're safe. And then you can see both sides of the trade again. While you're in a trade or entering a trade um, and it's either break even or slightly against you, you don't see the telltale warning signs that say, you know, I better get out of this. It's not doing what I want it to do. Or, or I better get out of this because, you know, the signals have changed. What caused me to enter this trade now does not exist. Why am I still sticking around? It's because your brain is wired for you to succeed. And, and Andre made a great point about that in his presentation. For me, you know, I, I think it's very important that you understand. And for most people that make a living, and I try to make a living every week at, at this, is not to kill the market, right? We just want to extract you know, I think Andre said the safe part in the middle. You know, it's really hard to get the extremes. Um, not everybody can pick a perfect top or bottom. We get pretty good at picking levels um, at channel trading, but uh, it's really, really hard to be absolute and perfect that you're going to be right on spot at uh, every single high and low on every single time frame. It's just, it's not a reality. And if you're trying to trade those, you're going to find yourself doing that think, hope, and pray for kind of thing a whole lot more than you want to. One of the things, if you guys will stick around to the end, uh, we're going to have a special where one of you is going to win a free lifetime membership uh, to our trading room. Um, and it also comes with a little bit of our, our, our trading software and our two-hour uh, training video. So uh, at the end of this, uh, for those that sign up to our uh, 99-cent trial that we're going to have, um, you're going to have an opportunity to win about uh, $2,000 worth of, uh, of stuff. So uh, stick around to the end. And I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that's going to be available to you. Uh, what I want to do, though, is, is introduce you to some very basic concepts of market profile and the stuff that we talk about all day long in our trading room um, and our new profile tool that I uh, created along with uh, 
uh, Muley from Financial Algorithms, he already had a profile tool, and then I had a bunch of ideas, and together we came up with uh, Profile Max, which uh, a lot of folks are using now around the industry because you have such an easy way to have it work with NinjaTrader and get the stuff that you previously could only get uh, at much, much more expensive uh, uh, charting packages. So again, we're going to show that to you. I can't teach you to trade like I talked about, but I'm going to show you some of the things that have kept me from having only three losing weeks in the last seven years, kind of since I turned my my corner trading. Uh, and I was I was profitable before that, but I've kind of been on a roll in terms of being able to maintain a, a very, very profitable record, pulling money out of the market pretty much every week. I try to take a paycheck every week and treat it like a job. And if that's what your goal is, a lot of the stuff I talk about will help you get there. Uh, not a get rich quick scheme, right? Uh, you see a lot of stuff where you see it on the internet, you'll see somebody's sales pitch and it'll be, you know, sit in your underwear in Hawaii, you know, two hours a day uh, and, you know, make all the money you ever dreamed of. And most of you wouldn't be coming to webinars still if you'd figured this out, right? Uh, I, I find this to be a job, uh, both trading it and educating. Um, and I treat it as such. And I think it's very important that you understand that uh, you can overdo it. I think you can sit at your computer too long during the day. Um, but it's important that you put your time in and that you watch a live market. Every single one of us, me included, can make the market work for you and every FIB work for you looking at a chart from right to left. But if you're looking at it from left to right and there's no bars on the right side, you know, it's not nearly as clear, right? Especially when you're putting your money on the line. So I, I simply try to take what the market gives me every, every day. I have some very high probability concepts and many years of experience watching the markets. And it gives me some visual clues. And uh, and from there, I look at taking very, very safe entries with really, really minute stop sizes as far as the EES goes for that. So another thing I want to do uh, for those that are interested in, uh, in visiting with us before we get into the meat of this, uh, my partner, Jerry Friedman, 30 years in the pit, uh, moderates for me in the middle of the day. I, I do the open for a few hours. Jerry takes over, and then I do the close for the last hour and a half of the regular U.S. session. And he's there to help with room support and assistance during the trading day, sales and support, any of the stuff that you're interested in. And then, of course, he's hilarious and provides a lot of uh, just fun things about 30 years in the pit can give you and, and what that's like. And a lot of the people you've heard about is famous ES, s and uh, pit traders. Uh, Jerry probably knows every single one of them. So it's great to have him as a friend and a partner, and uh, he's been a great asset to the room. Now to get to the meat of this thing, uh, I use market profile, uh, mini profiles, uh, a kind of a floating channel look just to kind of keep the boundaries of price together, and delta volume that I use to pinpoint trades, uh, trade entries and exits. And I'm going to go through some very, very basic profile concepts. There is not enough time uh, in a one hour or even a one week webinar to get you what it what it really is like to watch profile develop live every single day. And profile has changed dramatically. And some of the stuff I'm going to talk about here at the beginning are just basic concepts. So you'll know what we're talking about in the room. But for the most part, profile, as it was invented by Stottlemyre back in the 80s, even he will tell you doesn't work the same way. And so that's why we've created a tool to add on to what would be traditional TPO type profiles so that you can better see what's going on both on a big macro level and then all the way down to micro mini type profiles. And again, those are very, very important points um, as you develop as a market profile trader uh, for you to understand. But most of you have seen, or if you've seen profile, you see something that looks very similar to this, right? A TPO, time price opportunity profile, maybe a little bit of volume. And where we try to focus our efforts are on value area high, a point of control, and value area low, which have some very, very you know, important setups that come in and around those that we certainly won't have time to get into today, but it's just an idea to get your interest peaked a little bit. And how we play off of those, when we play off of them, when we don't, uh, which is just as important. Probably heard Andre say, you know, if you don't have at least uh, better than the 50-50 odds, I like to have two to three to one bare minimum before I'll take a trade. Um, otherwise, you're just gambling. Um, and when those opportunities are going to arise, you know, how far away your targets are before you can even begin to calculate whether you want to be in a trade. But there's some very high probability concepts that we go by, and profile is just one little simple part of that, right? What, another you know, key point with profile is that we, we really want to know what that first hour looked like. And that first hour uh, is what we call the you know, initial balance high and low, the initial balance area. And from there, we, we know things like range extension to the upside or range extension to the downside. 
and that gives us clues as to where we might end the day in the upper part or lower part of the profile. And there's probabilities around that, around 70, 80 percent. Um, so it keeps you generally on the right side of the trade unless there's a complete reversal of that that look on a given day. The first hour, again, is very, very important. The other thing that first hour does is gives us, which in the past were fantastic trade opportunities, now they're areas of interest, and you really need to have stuff to go along with it before you would take a trade. But 150% of that range and 200% of that range, both on the high and the low side of that first hour. And again, I look for those areas, but I only look for those areas when I have other stuff to go along with them. Really, really important that you understand. We like to have two or three things to confirm um, our reason for taking a trade. And I'm pretty similar to Andre in the fact that I like at least um, a buffer in my in my entry area that keeps me uh, from getting just like the, the quick stop out, right? You want to have at least uh, have built your your stop in mind with something that uh, is going to provide some something to lean on, whether it be a fib, um, the bottom of a candle, or what have you. So very very important that you understand that that it's not only your stop size. And most most people are okay with stop size. What their problem usually is is lack of accuracy in their entry. You know, and when you have poor entries, uh, it doesn't matter what stop size, right? I mean, if you're entering at absolutely the worst possible moment and wondering why you keep getting stopped out for two or three points in, in an index, um, it wasn't your stop, it was your entry. And uh, that alone should keep you, um, you know, in, inside the books and, and, and looking to learn a little bit more so you can be a little bit more precise, and that's what we teach. Uh, now, to understand profile, and, and this is where profile is going, guys. It's not as much just on TPOs anymore. Balance areas and volume at price, right? So when you're looking at markets, any tradable market, it, it can be indexes, it can be stocks, it can be, you know, Forex. You know, you have to understand that, that markets are either balanced, meaning they're going sideways. We call it a horizontal channel, chop, you know, and, and and if you don't recognize where you're at in terms of what the market is doing at that moment, you're likely to get very, very chopped up, right? And, and there's nothing worse than, you know, being on the right side of a trend and trying to enter, but not entering at the at the point where you have a chance to actually make some money. I mean, if you're entering in the middle of a balance area that's, you know, two points wide and you're trying to figure out what side it's going to come out on, you're more than likely going to get stopped out in both directions numerous times. And, and we try to help you avoid that. Where you want to be is where they're imbalanced, right? Where supply and demand are not balanced, right? The, you cannot meet the needs of all buyers and sellers, whether you're going up or down. You want to be here, right? And catching pullbacks and moves and pullbacks and moves rather than trying to be figuring out, let me go back one here, where you're going to be in this range, right? No matter what size that is and what time frame you're looking at, that's where you get in trouble this is where you make money, right? Even if you've got to sit for days and weeks or whatever, if you're trading a daily or a weekly time frame, or an hour or two if you're trading a small time frame, right? You get paid to wait, right? So on a TPO chart, that's what balance looks like. You know, it's very short and fat and wide, and that's what imbalance looks like on a profile, right? The day's range is much larger. It moves very quickly, and then it goes up and consolidates and makes a new balance area. So you want to spend all of your time in this and none of your time in that, if that makes sense, right? So as much as possible, what you want to be able to do is catch pullback. When these things start moving on a trend day, is catch pullbacks to be on it until it goes up and starts to you know, go into a balance area and work to the side. Here's what it looks like on a chart. You don't want to trade this, you want that. You don't want to trade that, you want this, right? These horizontal areas right here are the death of a lot of traders that really like to click. We call it click-itis. They spend all their, their day trying to catch moves that aren't going on. And then when the fast move comes, they've usually either depleted their, their uh, ability to make decent decisions for the day or the week, and, uh, or they're out of money, right, for the day or the week, or, or they've exceeded whatever their stops are for the day. So very important. You want to trade the fast areas of the market, the ones with you know overlapping bars or non-overlapping bars. You don't want the ones where we're overlapping. It spends a whole lot of time there. One of my favorite lines, again, you get paid to wait. 
And if you're waiting for the right stuff, there's no shame in that, right? You can make all of your money in just a few trades a week, or you can beat yourself to death and hopefully come out break even at the end of a week trying to trade chop. So what volume looks like on a profile is these big peaks, right? And you can see that price moves down and tries to hold and does and moves up. Where does it stop? Right on a big balanced area. It comes back down and checks it again. Where does it stop? Right on a big balance area. It comes back up. It pauses at that balance area, and then it moves through and up to the next one, right, the next major one. It pauses for a second here. Notice this, though. It goes up, comes back down, and it's created new support. So that new balance area right there is where price comes back down and checks in. So once you start to see those patterns develop, you know, where do you want to take your trades? Well, the first time you go into an area, you know, you want to use that for a ceiling, right? It comes back down. It works there. It can't shoot off of it that time. It goes back above at that point. Where do you look for taking profits? A little bit there and a little bit there. Okay. And here's what it looks like, again, just in a little bit different depiction. Price goes up to a balance area, comes back down to a balance area, comes back up in and kind of fills that hole underneath that balance area, works sideways, goes up another balance area. It comes back down. So we had support down here, and then we had resistance. Now it comes back up and gets through it, and it uses that just like anything else that you'd see with prior swing highs and lows. But right on the peak of the balance is where you start seeing the wicks back to the upside. And then it goes to the new one, right? Comes back down. Where does it check in on? That big balance area. It's a support zone now. And then the next time it comes back up, it gets through that one and goes to the, the one above. So once you start to see this, and once you're able to recognize where those areas are, you can feel a lot more confident looking to wiggle your way on a, on a much smaller time frame to take advantage of the moves through the small, fast areas, right? The areas that don't have as much volume, price moves through those a lot quicker. You know, as you see, it stops at that balance area across here, but once it gets through, it moves very quickly, just two bars to get you through all that, that smaller area. All right. Another thing we like to use, and again, this is for confirming entries. Uh, really, really important for me is that that I look at a smaller time frame to go with my big time frame work, and I use delta volume as a, a, a strong key to the change in direction in trading. Okay, and I, I like to have as many areas of confluence as I can find to make better trade decisions. I like to have a market profile level, a volume delta study, you know, proper channel tags. And, and I'm a big proponent of angle of price. And the way price moves within a channel, generally in this down move, once it's established this angle, the bottom touches of these channels, typically it won't exceed for very long through that on an active time frame. And by active time frame, I mean, you know, if, it's, if price is respecting that angle, and it falls out of it and really falls out of it, you're going to have to go up a time frame to find out where that new angle should be, right? Because it's gotten too steep in, for this time frame. So what you're going to have to look for is these kind of touches. And if you get a touch like that, and you can see how delta, there's divergence there with delta. And delta divergence simply is the point at which people start taking profit in a downtrend. Right, And when it tries to make a new low, there's people starting to buy that back. So there's less interest in selling that level. And for those of you that don't know what, what Delta is, Delta is contracts bought or sold at market. Right, So that's telling you when people really want to be either in the market or people really want to be out of the market. And you can tell people were selling it here, and there's a whole lot of Delta. But then you get down to this point where there was obvious support at the bottom of a channel and a profile level that there's a quick profit take. And then they try to sell it again and there was no interest in selling that. And then we changed direction very quickly, right? Two, three points there real fast. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. You guys can type yes. I, I'd be happy to answer questions as we go along here, but very important. And that's why we use and are so happy to use this, this tool because it takes out a lot of the lagging stuff. Like Delta is not a lagging indicator. Delta is immediate. When price moves, Delta is moving. And a lot of times with just regular moving averages, um, what you're finding is, um, you know, that, again, you're, you're kind of behind the eight ball and you have to wait for it to come back to you. 
But well, this Bob, this is just a, a drawn channel right here. There's the top line of it. There's the bottom line of it. Can you see that? Okay. And and again, there's other ways to do that. I I, I draw channels all the time because I'm a real big believer. What type? What bar type? I use candles personally. You mean is for is in terms of candles or bars? Bob. Oh, I mean, you, it doesn't matter. Range, you can use anything. Range, Rinko. Uh, you know, this is for illustration purposes. I, I use a for, for the ES. I like a, a you know forty seven fifty volume chart uh, for my entry chart on days where we have good volume. I might go a little lower than that um, if I need to, if it's slow. Now, here's another great example. A lot of folks, especially if you're breakout traders, this is where you usually get duped. Now, if it's if it's moved off and you're looking to take this little breakout long, right, out the upside, delta can be a pretty good clue down here that there was mucho amount of divergence, right? And so that breakout, people broke out. They didn't find any new buyers real quick, and everybody sold the crap out of it right there, right? So as it moved down, I, I kind of I like to draw trend lines or at least have a mental picture of the trend lines on the delta portion. And you know, as we start to get to lows, you know, if we're not making new lows in delta, then if I was short, that would tell me that I need to start lightening up or making sure that I've scaled most of my position out, if not all of it, right? Because it's about to change, right? So it pops back up, makes a higher low. And at that point, you're starting to see Delta kick in, no more shorts, right? Once Delta's kicked in like that, it's taken out, if you look to the left over here, all of those previous shorts, all of that short has been wiped out in just a few bars, right? They really bought that level. So Delta will help you by not taking, a lot of times, a poor breakout trade. Um, and it'll help you look for potential false break trades like this one right here, where you had a chance to take it down for four or five points right in the opposite direction right like a one or two tick above and then a failure back inside now we've developed a floating channel uh, based on some Bollinger and Keltner concepts uh, and more importantly we've got some auto fibs on the inside of it um, but what I like is when we've gotten so steep and you know you call that maybe a blowout top when it blows out the top side of something we've got good divergence right you can see the the Delta divergence on that next tag as it pops back up. A lot of times I'll take that top entry when I'm trading the 6E. Like after we've blown out and gotten back inside, if I get the delta, when it pulls back up against that, that'll be a normal entry for that to the short side. So really good important stuff to understand is that uh, this will give you an idea of where we might have a blow off on that time frame. Again, it may not be on every time frame. Now, for, for those of you that are really profile aficionados, uh, this will be a little bit easier concept to grab. Um, if you're brand new to profile, imagine what I showed you earlier being an entire day, one of these being an entire day. This entire thing is 30 minutes. Each one of these is 30 minutes. So each one of the letters represents three minutes instead of 30 minutes. So it's one-tenth the size. But when when you want to use these for, for entry purposes or to see where something's going to pull back to, what I like to see is have it, you know, pop back above on volume and go to it, you know, to make a new high or what have you, and then come back down and use that level for support. So all the volume came in and all the time spent came in right here and we pushed above. So coming back into that area where is where I would have been looking long once we have established that volume POC and we've got it set to volume in the room but that becomes your new floor. So on ways to get on, you're looking for it to come back down there. And the beauty of that is somewhere between 76 and a half and say 77 and a quarter is the entry. And you only need to be one or two ticks below that for your stop. Because if it gets back through there, everybody that bought that move and that breakout has to leave anyway. So why take an eight or 10 tick stop out when three or four is gonna work, right? We'll know for sure. If it gets below that, those guys are gone. And that's really important for you. Right. You want them. You want to know exactly how to finesse an entry. You do it off of something like this. Right. All these subsequent pullbacks. That would be your initial entry area when it pops above, comes back down. 
and then goes again. And you know at this point that's your line in the sand. It came back down. The next one goes, stays way above. Next one goes, stays way above. You've got a very clean POC area that you can use to continue to get price to move up and out. Questions on that? And while, while you guys are typing, you know, one of the things is the entire picture. I'm, I'm really big on teaching people the entire picture. Somebody will send me a chart and they'll say, you know, I, here's some lines, it crossed this line and it did that, but they don't tell me anything else that was going on in the market during that time, right? Meaning, you know, I got a, you know, MACD cross of this and I got above my 20 period moving average or whatever it is, but they don't tell me anything that was going on with internals. Were they getting support from Delta? Were they getting any of the things that would say, that would help me answer their question, right? And so what we've done is that, you know, we've got internals that matter, uh, like Vold, and uh, and I, I'm a big proponent of the use of, of the VIX as well. But uh, Vold is, is, is like the landlord, and that's what we call it in the room is the landlord. And uh, I've got a video on it, and I'll, I'll show you guys here in a second. But between the internals, the Promax tool, channel tool, and Delta, and our dual VWAP tool, you can see the whole picture. And that's what we want. So, Dan, I don't know if you can cut and paste that right there for me into the room. Um, but if you can cut and paste that into the room, those are some free videos that we have that give us a little bit of an idea uh, or give you guys a little bit of an idea. Uh, and you can watch them over and over and over again to, to kind of get a picture of some of the things that we do. Whether you join the room or not, they'll be, they'll be pretty helpful for you, especially Fold and Delta. We spent a lot more time on it on a Q&A in the room uh, about a year ago. And we just posted it up on my screencast site. Um, the uh, the important part again is that you that you kind of watch them over and over again and try to internalize that information. So Dan, if you could throw that in the room or you guys type it type it in, you'll be able to get to that link. There you go. Thanks so much. That's I don't know if everybody can see that though, uh, Jaron. Here, let me see if it'll let me do it real quick. No, it won't right there. Yeah, Dan's got it there. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So if you're a traditional profile user, you can build the tool out and make traditional profiles. You can merge them. You can do whatever you like. If you want traditional TPO with volume, right, you can do that. Right? Traditional TPOs big volume chart, you can set them to whatever time frame you like, right? You could do 200 days of volume or you could do two days of the volume, it does not matter. Uh, so depending on what, what kind of picture you're trying to get to find bigger targets, the more you know here, the better off you're gonna be, especially if you're playing much bigger time frames. Right, another perfect example, goes to balance, I mean to the tick almost, comes back down to balance. You see how they work together, right? They stop at balance, they pull back to a POC, they go up to a balance area, pull back to about balance area, and then go sideways into the rest of the day. Really important concepts. And again, we show this stuff all the time in the trading room. Um, let me see if this shows here. That's a copy of the profile tool. Can you guys see that or not so much? Hold on just a second. I'll fix that for you here. That's the one we use in the room with a daily TPO and I've got bars on them. So we can actually see the daily TPOs with POC value areas and the previous day's value areas in POC along with volume on the left side. So what in the room I try to show one screen and I give you guys as much information as you can see on that one chart along with the, uh, the way we set it up. This is our, our entry chart, a 4750 volume. There's the delta, there's our oscillator, and then the volume profiles. I have that usually set to two or three days. So we, we can see where the bulk of the volume is. And I'll show you guys this in the Q&A in the room later if, uh, if you'd like to join us. There we go. <clears throat> All right, now, 
this is a great example of big balance areas, and I kind of squeezed it so that you could see, but how price works to these areas and then works back. Right? These are the areas price moves pretty quickly. You can see that it did all of this work and builds out a big fat balance area, but it isn't until it gets above it that price moves in five or six bars what took 25 bars to build out sideways. Right? Top of balance, bottom of balance, top of balance, now starting to get tight and then blast out and go to the other side. And then when it's done, it blasts back down and goes to the peak of this one. Again, little bitty things that once you start to understand you know, the difference in how it rotates between balance areas, you can actually see when it starts to break, where is it likely to go? And when you're measuring targets, that's unbelievable, right? If you're at 41, let's just say 41 even, and you know you've got a target 50 away, well, you might feel a little bit better about you know, a 10 or 15 tick stop in the euro, right? That's more than three to one. Now, you can also do this. You can build out the mini profiles underneath this with your traditional profile. So you can actually see as price is working in a much smaller time frame, And then you have your giant balance areas as well. So there's an endless number of ways that you can build this tool out, right? And I've got probably 20 or 30 templates of different ways to look at different things uh, that I give to folks that, that have this tool. Um, again, very, very important that you start to get a basic understanding of profile. And then, you know, whatever picture suits the way that you look like to look at price is, is something that can easily be built with this tool. You can even build daily profiles as your minis and then show two or 300 days of volume off to the right with a 240 minute chart in the channel. All right, so many different little bitty ways that you can actually build this out. If you're a weekly time frame trader, something like this would be extremely valuable. You know, this is about as big as I would, you know, obviously want to take it. You don't think you want to do, you know, weekly profiles here and, you know, a daily chart or anything like that uh, in the middle or a weekly chart in the middle with, you know, 500 days of volume. Most people that are trading and most people that are listening right now uh, trade minute by minute rather than worrying about weeks and months, but it's important that you understand where those things are. And how the FIB tool works, and it's built into our channel, is it calculates the swing length that you can set from, you know, one tick to a thousand ticks, and then it'll build in a 382, a half, a 62%, a 786, and then also the 1.272 and 1.618 extensions of those. So if you're a FIB trader and you don't want to draw FIBs all the time, the tool will actually draw it for you and build it in inside the channel. And you could actually have volume on here, like a volume profile or the minis down below. There's an endless number of ways you can calculate this. And again, I showed you guys this earlier. This is one of my favorite setups as far as, as how I like to look at something when it's in a topping mode or bottoming mode. This case, it's topping. Um, in this case, we've, we've made a high. It's blown out the channel. It comes back in. You can enter either at three or at four, and your stop literally can be the length. I, I like a five range bar on the 6E when I'm trading like this. My stop's never bigger than the size of the bar that I enter on. So if I'm entering on a five range chart, I usually only use five or six ticks on the euro. And then I get in and scale something out and try to ride the rest, right? So you get the falling oscillator, right? You get a channel blowout, falling oscillator with divergence, right, which we have. That's the two. Retest of the channel top. Enter on the tag and the failure. You know, you may, may have not gotten it on that one. You get safe in the trade. You try it again when it fails, and then you're on for the trade. No more than five to seven ticks of risk. A lot of the work I do, I talk about big time frames in the room. Um, this gives you just an idea of the, the kind of work that I do. This was last year. Um, but you've got to understand how to calculate channel targets. And um, I put this target on here about, you know, three weeks before it actually happened on the break of this channel size. So there's a channel calculation that goes in. And again, this is for big time frame traders. But uh, we made a little double top under the spike high at the top of a channel. Notice how I talked about exceeding tops of legitimate channels. That's the top of a legitimate channel. And price never saw that again until just recently, right? A year and a half, year and change later. So down, the entry's back up on the channel test. It comes back down, it makes a new low, comes up here, retest, you can't find a new high. 
and then it rolls back over in a matter of six or seven days to the tune of about 50 points from the, well, from the original high about 100, about, about uh, I'm sorry, about 110 points. And this one's about 80 points. And again, much, much bigger time frame, much bigger picture, but the concepts are the same, whether you're looking at a daily chart or a three minute chart, as long as you understand the time factor when you're trading a small chart that you're trying not to fight too hard the 15 minute or 60 minute or daily chart, right? You always wanna get back in sync with whatever the bigger charts are doing and the little little charts help you do that. A lot of times I'll hear people, you know, we're in a downtrend. Well, you might be in a downtrend on a three minute chart, but you barely, you might barely be pulling back in a 60 minute chart. And that's the concept you need to stay with is staying on the right side of that trend. Critical, critical stuff. All right, again, one of you guys, we're getting ready to do this part. Um, what, what I want to do before we go into all our special offers is have you guys uh, open it up to questions. I wanted to leave 10 or 15 minutes, uh, and then we can go over to the trading room, and I, I can answer questions for uh, up to about an hour and have a, a real discussion if you guys like. I'll have another link for you here in just a minute. So I'll open it up. If there's questions, we'll, uh, we'll address them here. I can bring charts in. And if, uh, if there's no questions, we'll go through the special offers and then we'll run over to the trading room. So type away. I can see all the, all the, uh... yeah. Does any of this apply to spot Forex? Yeah, all of it. Um, the important thing to uh, Manuel is that if you, if you wiped off what the instrument was and what the uh, time frames were, the scaling, a chart is a chart is a chart, right? Whether it's a one minute, a daily, or weekly, or whatever. So if you're a real trader, and again, I'm not a big believer in systems trading because systems get beat up by algos. I'm a proponent of you learning how to be a trader, right? And understanding price action and, and the things that affect price more than I am about a specific system. So technically, I think you can trade to whatever you like, trade it with whatever you like. In the room, I teach the ES and bring in oil and uh, the 6E for, um, for teaching purposes, Michael. Um, I'm a, and this is the other thing I'm a huge believer in. A lot of traders, mostly unsuccessful, trade everything they can find. And hopefully I'm not offending anyone. But a lot of traders, mostly unsuccessful, trade everything they can find. Really good traders typically limit what they look at to just a few things, and they get to know them really, really well. And I think if you talk to, and again, I'm not talking about long-term position traders because I think you can find trades and hang on to them and then spend time. You know, I, I've run all the studies, Peter. He's saying his volume uh, for Delta require available for spot forex. I've run it. And it matches up perfectly with the uh, with the 6E when I do it. And I generally will trade the 6E personally, and Delta works perfectly on that. So uh, if you have access to the 6E and want to run Delta on it, and you're trading the US or Euro USD pair, uh, you should find those to be almost spot perfect. Especially on the bigger time frames, if you're not worried about just the little minute stuff the bigger balance areas are always going to be there. So great question. 